Hey guys, this is my dynamic programming tutorial with the longest common subsequence problem as our example. Now let me explain what the longest common subsequence problem is. We have two strings, let's call it P and Q, and we are trying to find a common string, and we are trying to find the longest one, of course. And in this case, that would be B, A, D. And one thing to note here is that these characters are not necessarily contiguous. We're going to solve this problem using dynamic programming, but let's first talk about this general procedure that we have uh, that we can use for solving any dynamic programming problems. So the first step is to come up with a recursive solution, and then we memorize the intermediate results or restore the intermediate results to make it run faster. And finally, we can come up with something called a bottom-up approach, and I'm going to explain what it means later. This is an optional step, by the way. Here's a recursive solution. We're going to write this function LCS, longest common subsequence of P0 and Q0, the two input strings, and we're going to return the length of the longest common subsequence instead of the subsequence itself. So with our previous example, we're going to return instead of BAD, we're going to return the length of it, which is 3. The idea behind any recursion is that, of course, we're going to take down this problem into smaller problems, and we're going to solve those instead. And there are two cases we need to consider for that. The first case is when P0 and Q0 end with the same character. Let's, call, let's just call it X. And there are some preceding characters. Let's call them P1 and Q1. They could be any lengths. They could be empty or non-empty. What we say in this case is that the longest common subsequence of P0 and Q0 must end with X. And so we'll get rid of these and we'll find the LCS of P1 and Q1 and we'll append it there before X. And that's going to be our uh, longest common subsequence. So that's expressed as LCS of P0 and Q0 is equal to 1, which comes from X plus LCS of P1 and Q1. The second case is when P0 and Q0 don't end with the same character. So let's just call those characters X and Y. And again, there are some preceding characters before X and Y. Let's call them P1 and Q1. Again, they could be any lengths. And what we do in this case is we'll say, OK, let's just get rid of one of the characters. Let's just say X. And we'll find the LCS of P1 and Q0 which is what I wrote here. And we'll do the same thing with y and find the LCS of P0 and Q1, and we'll take the longer one of those. So that's expressed as LCS of P0, Q0 is equal to maximum or the larger one of those. Here's a recursive solution in code. We define the function LCS of P, Q, N, M, and N and M, those are integers. They are here because I don't want to uh, recreate strings every time I call this function. Here's what I mean. So let's say p equals abc and we have n equals 2. Then instead of looking at the whole string, we'll just look at the first two characters. And it's the same thing with q and m. If q is abc and m is 1, we'll just look at the first character. So this way we don't have to reproduce strings every time. And here's our base case. If n equals 0 or m equals 0, that means we're looking at an empty string. So we'll just return 0. And I'm storing uh, this result in the result variable and returning it here. If that's not the case, and if the, first if the last character of p and the last character of q are the same, we'll just return 1 plus LCS of pq, n minus 1, m minus 1. And if that's not the case, the last characters are not going to be the same. But I wrote this just for clarity. And what we're going to do here is take LCS of PQ n minus 1 m and LCS of PQ n m minus 1. And we'll take the maximum one of those and return that. Here's a quick analysis of a recursive solution. We'll look at one of the worst case scenarios when P and Q 
don't have any characters in common. And we'll look at this particular example when P equals AA and Q equals BBB. First, we'll call LCS of PQ 2, 3 because we have two characters and three characters. And to find that, we need to call LCS of PQ 1, 3. I just abbreviated it as L13. And we'll also need to call L22. And to find L13, we need to call L03, which is a base case, and L12, and so on. That's what this diagram shows. And as you can see, the problem with this approach is that there are a lot of duplicates in our computation. So we are computing L12 twice, the exact same computation, and we are computing L11 three times. And that's why this is very wasteful and it's very slow. In fact, the time it takes to find the original LCS is about an order of 2 to the power of n plus m in the worst case scenario. And dynamic programming says, why not just store all those intermediate results so we can make this uh, function run faster? So now that we found a recursive solution, we're going to memorize or store the intermediate results to make our function run faster. Here's a memorized version of our previous recursive function. The only things that changed from the previous function are these three lines. And what we're doing here is we are storing the intermediate results in this array, in this two-dimensional array of height n and width m. And every time this function is called, we ask ourselves, do we, or, do we already uh, have this result? So we're initializing each element to undefined, and we ask ourselves, do we already have it? And if we already have the intermediate results, if this is not undefined or if it's already defined, then return that instead of going through the whole function. And if that's not the case, we go through the whole function, find the result, but before we return it, we store it in this array. So what's the runtime for this? One thing you can see right here is that we reach this last line only at most n m times because that's the number of variable combinations we have, the possible variable combinations we have. And so we go through this whole function only at most n m times. And in this part, we call LCS at most twice. So the number of recursive calls is at most two n m times. And each time, the time it takes to execute each call is a constant time. So the whole time complexity is an order of n times m, which is much better than what we had before. So we found a recursive solution, and we memorized intermediate results. And now we can come up with a bottom-up solution, which is an optional step. In our recursive and memorized solutions, what we did was, let's just say for this particular example, P equals AA and Q equals AAB, what we did was we called LCS of PQ23, and we said, okay, to find this, we need to call LCS of PQ13 and LCS of PQ22, and so on. So we started at the top, and we went down. So it's a top-down approach. We can also use a bottom-up approach. So start with m equals 0 and n equals 0, and ask ourselves, what's LCS of PQ 0, 0? That's, that's, of course, 0. And these are going to be all zeros. And we can fill out this whole table. So what's LCS of PQ? One, one. For that one, we'll be comparing just these two characters. So that's going to be one. In the code, we are actually using this, the information from here. And same thing with n equals 1, m equals 2. We're comparing these three characters. So that's going to be one. That comes from this part. So we're going to fill out this whole table that way. Once we fill out this whole table, we can just look at the last value, n equals 2 and m equals 3, and that's the value we wanted in the first place. All right, hopefully you liked the video. If anything was unclear, please let me know. 
And if you like this one, you might also like this other video I have about dynamic programming with Fibonacci sequence. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, you can just subscribe right here. And thanks so much.